съществува от Open Source екипа на VMware и днес ще ви разкажа за проект, наречен Network Service Mesh. Сега спочнах на български. Let's talk about the story, the story of technology through the years. First, we had those monolithic applications running on bare metal machines. And then the VMWave came out and we started migrating our workloads to virtual machines for benefits like uh, reduced operational costs, faster provisioning, improved efficiency. And now everyone is talking about containers and microservices. And here projects like Docker and Kubernetes are becoming the standard for such systems. And it's all great and maps really well for use cases that allow uh, rapid and fast adoption of new technologies. But let's see how the same evolution story looks like from the eyes of the telecommunication companies or the so-called telco operators. Apparently, telcos are moving a bit slower. And this is not always bad, because due to their nature, they prefer to use well-established technologies. And for example, initially, a typical TELC system consisted of lots of physical boxes, each of them uh, uh, implementing specific network function. And then they decided to adopt virtualization and move that physical boxes to virtual machines. And that introduced the uh, VNFs or the virtual network functions, for example, like firewall. And this changed the way networking was done for the last couple of decades. This was the first uh, wave of NFV or networking function virtualization. Today, telcos are looking again at the enterprise uh, and the cloud native world uh, to, to leverage its benefits and, for example, adopt technologies like Kubernetes on their systems. And this introduces uh, uh, CNF, so the cloud native network functions. And at some point, the end idea is to have a mixed setup of network functions that have all uh, bare metal, virtual machines, and containers. And pro uh, Network Service Mesh is a project that aims to be part of that transition. What is a network service? Imagine this situation. You have uh, some application that is running in the public cloud and it wants to consume uh, some service uh, that is in another public cloud or if in a corporate intranet. And here we have a problem. Usually, the application implements the connection logic within itself. And uh, this is not uh, very nice, especially when we have uh, multiple applications. Imagine that the connection changes and then we have to apply that changes to each of the applications. And this is not very efficient. So instead, uh, we, can have a net, we can offload that to a network service that can take care of that connection. And in this uh, situation, we would have clients that consume network services. We would have endpoints that implement network services. For example, a firewall or VPN gateway you will need to go through in order to connect to the corporate internet. And we would have wires that are responsible for the connections and that are payload agnostic. And all of this form the concept of network service mesh. Uh, NSM is an infrastructure layer. Uh, it manages layer two and layer three service to service communications. It provides uh, on-demand and negotiated point-to-point -point connections, and it exposes a gRPC API to publish and consume network services. And the great thing here is that this happens without any changes to Kubernetes or the CNI network. Let's see how... Oops. Let's see how uh, we can describe uh, network service in a simple YML file. Uh, we specify the payload type, for example, IP. Uh, we specify source and destination selectors. For example, we can choose the firewall to be source and VPN to be a destination from the firewall. 
And this way of service definition allows chaining multiple endpoints or clients, and this creates the so-called service composition. In this example, imagine that the client requests to consume this network service. We have defined that we have a destination to the firewall, so it will first connect to the firewall, and then we have defined a rule from the firewall to the VPN gateway. Uh, and uh, this means that uh, the connection uh, routing will go that way. And this way we can describe whatever topology we would like to. Uh, let's see the same example that we showed with the public application in Dundon, uh, but uh, in Kubernetes. So we have typical Kubernetes deployment and we have uh, network service mesh deployed on top. <coughs> We have our client and endpoints like pods. They can be in, uh, in different domains. Uh, uh, and uh, what happens? The endpoints announce themselves to NSM, and the client will request a network service from NSM. Then NSM will inject the necessary interfaces to all of the pods, and will create a connection tunnel between them. And this will complete the communication and again, the great thing here is that all of this uh, happens without any changes to the underlying CNI in Kubernetes. Uh, let's uh, see the same, but in more details, so that we can understand it better. NSM consists of two main building blocks, uh, NSM manager and forwarding plane. Each of them lives on every node within the Kubernetes cluster. We also have the Kubernetes API server serves as a registry for network services. Uh, the, managers are, the manager is responsible for negotiating connection details and for liveness uh, checks after that. And after the connection is set up, so we need someone actually do the job and complete the connection. This is the forwarding plane. And let's see how a connection request looks like. We deploy the network service to the Kubernetes API server. This is the same YML file that we showed previously. Uh, we have our endpoint, for example, a firewall. The firewall announced itself uh, to the NSM manager, and the NSM manager will register uh, that endpoint to the Kubernetes API server. Uh, on the other side, we have our client, the client will request the consume network service. We we'll send the request to its manager, and the manager will send the request to the Kubernetes API server. Then there it will look for the manager uh, that is related with the endpoint this client wants to connect to. And once it finds where the manager is located, both managers will start negotiating the connection details. And once everything is set up, they will inform the forwarding planes for that connection, and the forwarding planes will create a tunnel between themselves. Then they will inject the necessary interfaces within the client and the endpoint, and that will complete the connection. And in that example, we, sh uh, the, we had both client and endpoint that were uh, containers within Kubernetes. But let's extend that concept and imagine that one of them is a container and the other is a virtual machine. We talked in the beginning about mixed setup. Um, so we, on the one side we have uh, Kubernetes, on, on the other side we have some cloud orchestration software like OpenStack for example. Oh, let's say that in our example, the endpoint is a virtual machine. So it will again announce itself to the uh, NSM manager, but this time we will use an external NSM manager. Uh, the manager will again register that endpoint to the Kubernetes API server. On the other side, the client will request network service. Uh, and the manager will send that request to the Kubernetes API server. After the manager finds where the external manager is located, uh, they will start negotiating the connection. And the difference here is that uh, uh, in, the one, in the one side, 
uh, the NSA manager will inform the forwarding plane, but on the other side for the connection will be responsible the underlying SDN implementation, for example, something like open their white, uh, their white. And uh, uh, the forwarding plane and the SDN will create a tunnel between themselves. They will again inject the necessary interfaces and this will complete the connection. Let's have a more telco-oriented example. We are going to recreate a typical 4G LTE network topology using NSM. What a 4G LTE network looks like? We have our devices, for example, cars, laptops, phones, IoT devices, and so on. This is called the user equipment. Then we have the radio access network. Uh, these are lots of antennas and base stations. And uh, we have the evolved ca packet core network. Uh, these are a lot of uh, services, uh, a lot of components, each of them responsible for different services within the 4G network topology. For example, some are responsible for authentication, others are gateways, some are responsible for charging, and so on. And then the output goes to a data network, uh, for example, internet. On this, uh, in our example, we are going to focus on that box in the middle or the evolved packet core network. And let's see how we can recreate it with network service mesh. Uh, first, we decide that each component of this network topology is going to be a pod within Kubernetes. Uh, and now we have to find how to connect all those pods, how to map it to network service mesh. Although uh, each uh, pod can be both a client on an endpoint, uh, there are no restrictions about that. But for simplicity, we will choose uh, each pod to be either a client or an endpoint. Uh, for example, uh, and yeah, this will look something like that. It's randomly decided. It's just for creating the connections. For example, we choose MME to be an endpoint and HSS to be a client. And let's see how to describe that with uh, network service YML file. Uh, so uh, this file consists of matches. Uh, each match has source and destination selectors. And there we specify the labels. Uh, for example, uh, when, uh, we, when the request is coming for a source, la source labeled with S6E, uh, it will look for an endpoint and destination labeled with MME because this is described in the YML and this client in that case will connect to that endpoint. Let's see how we can describe the endpoints and the clients in the YML file. Uh, for the endpoint, we need to specify the uh, network service it belongs to. For example, we choose it to call it 4G network. We also need to specify the label we will advertise from this endpoint, for example, MME. For the client, we need to specify the network service it wants to consume. And we also need to specify uh, the label uh, we want to advertise as a client. And again, once we have it, we know from the uh, network service topology described in the YML that this client, when, when it requests a network service, it will want to connect to this specific endpoint. Um, and let's see an uh, actual demo uh, with Kubernetes deployment of uh, that 4G LTE network uh, topology with, uh, uh, with uh, NSM. We have uh, our Kubernetes deployment. Uh, we have Kubernetes cluster with two nodes. There is nothing fancy in it. Uh, we deploy NSM using Helm. Uh, and once the deployment is complete, we would expect 
to see uh, the managers and the forwarding plane, we would have two managers and two forwarding planes, because as we said, each manager and each forwarding plane uh, lives on every node of the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, so we have completed the deployment, and now we can see the manager up there and the forwarding planes. Uh, now we need, on top of that, to uh, deploy the 4G uh, network topology. Uh, we deploy all those YML files that we showed previously, the network services and the endpoints and clients. Once they are deployed and the uh, deployment is completed, this means that we have uh, already uh, all the injected necessary interfaces and we have all the connections between them completed. And now we need to check whether they are really completed. We have a script uh, that verifies that. It loops through all of the clients of the deployment, and from it, each client, it uh, pings all the endpoints this client is connected to. And we can see the successful pings, and we can see uh, the pods of the clients and the endpoints each ping is for. Uh, what else we can do to showcase that? Uh, we can use a uh, dashboard like Skydive, for example, to visualize that. Uh, so we can see uh, our uh, two nodes of Kubernetes. On each node, we are able to see uh, the pods, and on each pod, we can see the containers within it and the uh, network interfaces. Uh, we are also able uh, to see the connections between each, uh, between the containers. Um, and uh, we, we can see those spot pod connections, all of them are created by Network Service Mesh. We will also, uh, at the end, be able to see uh, the metadata uh, like uh, type, state, ad address. Uh, we can see uh, the, uh, the driver uh, for that interface. We can see the IP address. We can see the matrix for that connection. And uh, what, is, uh, what, uh, what we showcased is that with NSM, we can have flexible and dynamically defined infrastructure. And this is very important for the 4G network topologies. Another thing to share is that uh, we are actively involved in the CNCF, CNF testbed. Uh, we, uh, it, this is an initiative to compare CNF architectures with the more traditional VNF ones. We already have uh, two use cases deployed in that testbed. And now uh, we are going to, uh, to add there this 4G LT network example. Uh, we are also looking for contributions to extend that with open air interface. If anyone is fan is, in, is interested. Uh, we are also preparing a demo for the Mobile World Congress uh, next year in Barcelona. And in half a month, uh, the network first Network Service Mesh Conference is coming. It's going to be held in San Diego, California, during KubeCon, North America. And what is uh, the takeaway of, of this? We see that uh, telco operators and service providers are actively looking at the cloud native world to build their next generation solutions. And this means that containers and all the ecosystem of projects around them are going to be part of that, uh, of this movement. And here projects like Network Service Mesh uh, aim to provide features that will help uh, those future systems and to be part of that transition. So thank you and I'm open for questions.